everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is written and directed by James Gunn, who also wrote and directed the first Guardians of the Galaxy. The film stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, and Kurt Russell. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is about when the team gets into a situation with the gold people after one of the members steals something. So it gets them in trouble and now the gold people are after them. While the Guardians of the Galaxy are trying to hide from these gold people, they crash and that's when Peter's father actually finds Peter. Peter goes to his planet along with Gamora and Drag so that way Peter could learn more about his father and why he wasn't really there when his mom passed away. Just more to be explored of what was set up in the first film. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, of course I was so excited for this film. I couldn't wait because of how much I loved Guardians of the Galaxy. If you guys have seen my review that I've done a few years ago, you know that I absolutely love that film. I love the world. I love the characters, I love the humor, I love the action sequences, I love the soundtrack. Just everything you needed to make a really great fantasy film was in Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was also really excited for this one because you have the cast back and James Gunn is back to write and direct this film. And after seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, was I disappointed with this film? No. Absolutely. I was not disappointed. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a very worthy sequel to the original film. The action sequences in this film are breathtaking. It's not as action-packed as the original film. The original film definitely has more action than this one. But when the action is there in the sequel, it is so much fun. Visually, it is just so awesome. There is this big epic scale that James Gunn just brings as he is filming this, these action sequences. The team, they still feel like a team, even though they are split up for the majority of this movie. When uh, Peter, Drax, and Gamora, they split up from Rocket and Groot for a good portion of the movie. I did really like their interactions. Their banter is still a lot of fun. It's still really entertaining, especially when it comes to Peter Quill and Rocket Raccoon. That's kind of the bummer with them being split up for the majority because I'm so used to seeing Rocket and Peter banter with each other so many times that when they're split up for the majority, it's like, oh man, I wanted more of that. But it's still really funny to see these two banter. I just still really care for these characters, maybe even more so than the original, to be honest, because they're definitely more fleshed out. Well, most of them are more fleshed out, at least. Uh, Peter Quill. He's definitely the one that's the most fleshed out, and you kind of see how his character has changed since the original. Gamora is still really badass here. Zoe Saldana just kills this role. But what I really liked about this film is how they explored more of the Gamora and Nebula storyline. I surprisingly found that interesting. Now, if you guys remember, one of my flaws with the original Guardians of the Galaxy was actually Nebula. I did not really find her all that interesting to be perfectly honest. I really did not care. However, in this film for some reason I actually cared about Nebula. I actually felt connected. And that's because in this film we actually see why Gamora and Nebula are the way they are. I mean, when they are the daughters of Thanos, I mean, like that must be rough. But you actually see why Gamora is the way she is, why Nebula is the way she is, why she just has so much rage to her, and it makes sense. And I think that's why I actually cared for Nebula here in this installment. Also, there's Rocket Raccoon. I wouldn't necessarily say he's as fleshed out as something like Gamora or Peter, but he definitely does have his time and how he can be more than just that very snarky kind of character. And I still love Rocket, Rocket Raccoon here. He is so funny. He's so entertaining. He's definitely that same character that I've come to love. And then of course, Baby Groot is so adorable. I love him so much. He is just such a joy to watch on screen. He is definitely one of the show stealers. Michael Rooker as Yondu. Wow, did they really, really 
give him more to do here than the first because in the first you know he's only in the movie like here and there but here in this film he's definitely more present and i think it was actually a smart move on james gunn's part to actually give him more screen time. Because of that, you actually care for him. And without spoiling anything, there's a lot of heart to this character. There's the heart that I was not really expecting at all. Mantis, I also have to say, she is awesome i love this character the actress i don't know the name but i thought she did a very very good job and the way she would interact with drax especially those are definitely some of the funniest moments because drax is just throwing out like all these insults and he explains to her how it's like a compliment like there's all these things that i just found to be so entertaining and just so memorable and then of course Drax himself, don't think I forgot because I wanted to really save him. Drax is awesome. Possibly even more awesome than the first film. And I have to say Dave Bautista did improve on his acting here. Because another one of my issues I had with the first was that I know it's an unpopular opinion of me to say, but I actually felt like Dave Bautista's acting in the first Guardians was a little bit weak. It's not like he was bad. I'd say at best he's decent. Not good per se, but he's decent at best. But I just thought he came off as a little weak. And while I did still care for Drax in that film, I felt like acting wise out of the group of five, Dave Bautista was the weakest. But here, I have to say, he really, really improved on his acting. The comedy here is awesome. I actually think the humor here is better than the humor in the original film. And that's saying something because a lot of the humor in the original film was very funny, but I actually think the humor in the sequel is actually more enjoyable. It's more funny, and it actually might be just a little bit more memorable, personally. The comedy here is fantastic, but back to Drax, he probably is the funniest thing when it comes to this film. A lot of the moments, when I look back at it, they come from Drax. There's some that come from Yandu, without spoiling anything. There's Rocket Raccoon. Everyone, even if it's just for one scene, they have their time to do or say something funny. James Gunn's direction, I mean, need I say more? He does a beautiful job of directing this film. He really knows how to take you into the action. He knows how to take you into the more slower moments moments and that's something that surprised me about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is that this is definitely more character based like it doesn't really focus that much on the action it's more about the characters really and I think that was a smart move on James Gunn's part it's definitely not bigger than the first film and it's not like every sequel has to be bigger and better than the first film I mean look at Finding Dory part of the reason I love Finding Dory from last year was because it wasn't really bigger than the first film but it was that small scale adventure that they still managed to make very entertaining and very memorable to me and i would say that's the same situation here with guardians the adventure here is more small but it's still very entertaining to watch nonetheless also as for the soundtrack i just said earlier i love the soundtrack in the original film and here i thought it was terrific i will say it's not as good good as the first film soundtrack i will say that but volume two does still have an awesome soundtrack nonetheless a lot of the songs from volume two is still really sticking with me as i'm filming this review the opening credits i thought was so awesome in this film too i do think the first film's opening credits is better though but the opening credits here still in volume two i thought it was just amazing there really is just so much to admire about guardians of the galaxy volume two i liked the main villain and I don't want to really spoil anything it's kind of hard to do this without spoiling anything all I'm gonna say is when we get to the climax that's when the villain really comes in and I was like wow that's actually a pretty intimidating villain a better villain than Ronan from the first film for sure I thought Rocky Raccoon and Yondu they also interacted very well with each other like surprisingly they actually made a pretty dang great duo here especially with Groot being a baby I'm sure Rocket needed someone to actually talk to so it was cool to see Rocket and Yondu have their interactions and of course when we see baby Groot have his 
his interaction with Rocket or just anyone else. That was great. Kurt Russell, I will say, I did think he did a very good job acting in this film. It was really cool to see Kurt Russell here. There's also another actor that does show up here, but only for a few scenes in total. And James Gunn does consider this certain actor a spoiler, so I'm not going to mention his name, but for the few scenes you do see this certain actor in, it was so awesome. Something that I'm glad James Gunn continued to deliver is actually the emotion. This is actually a pretty emotional film, really when you get to the climax, because one of the things that made the first film so great was actually the more dramatic scenes. It wasn't always like funny, 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 funny. You know, there were actually some dramatic moments that happened the first that actually made me go, wow. And the same thing does go for here. I'll even be honest, uh, when we get to the climax, I got pretty choked up. I wouldn't necessarily say I cried. I wouldn't necessarily say I shed a tear, but I got pretty choked up with the climax. Um, it was beautiful. It was, wow. James Gunn really does know how to handle emotional moments. Uh, it's really impressive. And of course, in case I haven't mentioned it because I don't think I did for some reason, the cinematography is gorgeous in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Just like with the first film, the use of color palettes that are used throughout this film are just very impressive. It just looks so colorful. Even when the film does tend to get serious, it's still very colorful, and I think it definitely works in that sense. Now, the only problems I did have with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is that this film does feel disjointed, particularly like in the first, maybe like, 45 minutes, one hour. It was going all over the place. Like one moment, you'll see these guys running away from these gold people. And then you see them with uh, Kurt Russell. And then you see Rocket Raccoon and Baby Groot in the ship. And then you see uh, Peter talking to his father. And then you see Gamora with Nebula. And then you see Drax with Mantis. Even though I was really getting into at least most of those scenes, the way it would cut to all these stories, I won't lie, it did feel pretty disjointed. Unfortunately, I didn't really find myself invested in the father-son dynamic. Um, there wasn't really that emotional punch I was hoping for from the storyline, and that's a shame because I really wanted to see Peter and his father connect, and say for like maybe one moment that I did like from them, I didn't really overall find the father-son storyline with Peter Quill and his father to be all that interesting personally and Kurt Russell's character unfortunately isn't even that interesting like the actor the actor himself does do a good job but the script you know James Gunn while he did do a very good job writing this film I have to say one of the things he could have done a better job writing is Peter Quill's father Drax isn't really fleshed out and that's a shame to me because yes he's very funny I love Drax here possibly more than the first film I love him but I wish that they got to explore him and there was a point there was a point where you think they were gonna explore Drax there's a scene where Drax and Mantis are talking and they're talking a little bit about Drax's past and you think they're gonna explore more into that and then nope it just focuses on something else. And I'm like, oh man, that's a shame. There were times where I did feel the film was dragging. I thought a few scenes did drag on a little too long. And I think they could have edited down a few of those scenes just a little bit personally. Some of the humor doesn't work. Same thing goes for the first film. I forgot to mention that in my review for the first Guardians, but yeah, some of the humor in there, you know, didn't always work. And that same thing does go for the sequel some of the humor didn't always work but man the humor that worked definitely completely outweighs the humor that didn't work here and the last problem i did have with guardians of the galaxy volume 2 and i know other reviewers have been bringing this up and that's because i completely agree with them are the gold people the gold people 
They're not interesting. They chase after the Guardians of the Galaxy like once in a while and they're not necessary. Why did James Gunn have to really bring these people? Yes, we see him in an after credits scene, but that's an after credits scene. This is not like the entire film, you know? If anything, maybe they could just put them in the after credits scene and the beginning. Overall, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, while I wouldn't say it's as fast paced as the original, and I also wouldn't say it's as action packed as the original film, it's not bigger than the original film, which is not a bad thing, but it is more focused on characters. I would even say it's definitely more serious than the original film. It is more funnier. And the soundtrack, while not as good as the original film, I did think that it was pretty dang awesome and the action sequences are a blast to watch whenever they are there. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, while I will say it's not as good as the first film, it is still a good sequel. It's a fun sequel. It's a solid sequel. I'm gonna give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 3 out of 4 stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and which one did you like better? Did you like the first film better or did you like the second film better? This is Twain to Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power! Say the same brand name, you're a fine girl.